show the measurements that I took. Uh, one of the main measurements that we're going to be checking is uh, oil clearance in between um, these little uh, braces and the, uh, the actual pump shaft itself. This is the other little piece to it. Uh, I've got a, some snap ring pliers here because I have to uh, inspect the oil seal here. And for me to check that out, I had to use uh, uh, some snap ring pliers to check that out. Uh, I got some picks to put that oil seal out and put it back in. These are the various seals. You can see that this one's got a uh, rubber and plastic seal that kind of goes together. This plastic here is a little bit chewed up. That's one thing that you're going to be checking for because if uh, any of your seals are chewed up or dry rotted or something, you're going to end up having um, a fluid leak in the pump itself. So for demonstration purposes, we're going to be reinstalling this. Uh, but in real life scenario, we would just replace these. Most of the time, if you're going to take a pump apart this far, you're going to replace all these seals anyway. So we've got all these parts here. And uh, we're going to be starting from the back side of it. Okay, you can see here where that one seal goes. This is our um, our main assembly for the housing, for the pump housing. You see this? This will, uh, this shaft and and other component will go in there. This stuff goes on top of it, kind of sandwiches all together. Um, but first thing that you're going to do is, uh, I actually, I've got a straight edge here. You have to check for warpage. You put the straight edge right on there. Uh, my other team over there has got it right now, but you would check it across, check it this way, check it uh, four different kind of ways, and then you would use your little feeler gauge to try to get up underneath the straight edge somewhere so you can check for warpage on the housing itself. Uh, you're also going to be uh, inspecting all of your seals, making sure they go back in healthy and, not, uh, and flat the way that they're supposed to. Okay, this is... Um, where the where the hydraulic fluid would go in and get spun around by this uh, by the shaft and the other gear component, uh, and it it's gonna get pushed through here. The fluid's gonna go out the out the outside of it, and then gonna get pushed on out. Okay, and that's how the that's how this pump in particular uh, builds pressure in the system. So let's go ahead and put let's go ahead and put uh, these seals right back in it. Okay. And then you can tell on this side of the housing, it's got two little holes for these nipples to go in, and that indicates that that's the front side of our housing. As you can tell, the shaft is going to be sticking out one side, and that's why I got to build it from the bottom side up. Okay. So once you've got this lined up, you can take this face off. You're going to line these up with your, uh, with your bolts right here, your mounting bolts, bolt holes. If you want, make it a little bit simpler for you. You can have these already in there. That way you ensure that you're, uh, you're on there straight and snug. Okay. So now this back side over here, this side was actually facing upside down because these seals have to be facing towards each other, okay? So if you could kind of imagine that, these shafts in there, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and um, actually assemble this part together right now. You see how that fits right in that little channel? And then this other, this other plastic piece fills the gap that's right here on that rubber seal, okay? So it's gotta go in there nice and flat, snug with it. And then you've gotta to try to put this back into right back in there, see that? And I mean, if, the, if this little plastic seal is chewed up, and it's gonna be that much more difficult to get it in there, okay? You see how it's not laying flat right there? Just because it's been chewed up. It's been bent out of whack. And it might not even. Okay? 
once you have this in and take the same feeler gauge because you don't want you don't want any gap around here you want all your fluid to go through uh, where it's supposed to and I still put this thing back in upside down man Golly. remember those seals have to be facing each other so that was my bad this little seal just fell out here on the sides we have our inlet and our outlet ports okay, the inlet one is usually going to be bigger than the uh, than the outlet and that's because it's got to build up pressure okay so the, the fluid coming in not really a big deal but once it goes through it's got to build up pressure enough uh, to drive whatever it is that this pump is driving okay so we've got here these are our um, our plugs that we use to cover things up, you know, while the pump isn't being used to help prevent debris from falling in inside our pump. So they're two different sides. You can actually see a little bit better, right? So the outlet, or I'm sorry, the inlet fluid going in, big, uh, big hole, smaller hole for the outlet. Now inside, you can see how I've got this one half of the casing for the. Uh, for the drive shaft and the uh, and the gear, so I've got the seal facing up, and I've got these channels facing towards the outlet, right? So the fluid's going to come in through the inlet, go outside of the of the gears, and it's going to go through those channels and come out the outlet. Okay, that's important to help build up pressure and to keep pressure. Now these two components here. This is our power here because it's on the drive shaft. Um, it's our it's our driving gear. This is our driven gear. So if you think about it, this is the master, this is the slave. They're gonna be in constant mesh the entire time that they're in there. It's supposed to be set, set up for a uh, for a constant pressure setup, also known as a positive displacement pump. Okay, so once you have the, the gears in there, you're going to make sure that your seal is sitting flush. Okay, this one's sitting much more flush than the other side. Um, you're just going to put it right down on top of uh, the gearing here. And again, we're going to take our feeler gauge. I have a decimal 002, so a 2000 feeler gauge pretty much the smallest thing that would be allowed. Anything, uh, if it's got any kind of gap where this can go in, then you're gonna have fluid leakage. All right, and again, those little uh, seals are there to maintain the seal and allow the pump to flow through. All right, so I've got a little bit of a space where this gauge could actually go into possibly some slight warpage. Uh, or it might just be because those uh, those seals inside are a little bit chewed up. They're not allowing this to fall in there flat. Okay? So once we've taken that measurement there, we're going to be ready for the next part of our assembly, which is literally just putting on the top cover. And remember, this thing's got little indentions for these little nipples to go through. And these uh, this side of the face actually has the threads in it where those bolts are supposed to go through. So I mean, it might go in there just fine. I might actually have to uh, flip this around to get these bolts to seat. Take our entire pump. We're gonna give it a few turns by hand just to hold this entire assembly together. Leaking, it's not going to hold the seal. 
We have our snap ring pliers here. Try to get this on the first try. Shrink the snap ring down. down in there. Bam. Alright, so our snap ring. Back in place. Film the channel nice and snug. So that means that we shouldn't have any kind of uh, leakage from our pump. Now if we've installed that. We can set this back down. Torque spec on these bolts is about 15 foot pounds on them, and that's not a whole lot of uh, that's not a whole lot of torque. You don't want to over torque, you start to end up stretching things uh, or possibly breaking the mounting bolts. Then you're gonna take your uh, what is this a hex key five six seats. enough torque, get them nice and snug. If you can't get enough torque on these, uh, it's very helpful to have a table vise. I know for a fact that I've got these snug enough to the point where our pump is back in uh, operating condition. This is where the pulley would slide on it. You could attach a belt to it, and it would start moving fluid from one side to the other. Um, and it would help you drive, um, I don't know, like a conveyor belt or something. That's what usually these pumps are set up on. Now this has been um, a, a GP, which stands for Gear Pump F20. That means it's a high pressure. Uh, usually set up for about 2,500 PSI. Uh, and then, you know, you've got the other serial numbers for identification uh, in case you need to replace parts on this model. Uh, typically, you would find this pump at your big bulk tool stores like Northern Tool. Uh, Harbor Freight, I know, has a couple of them. Or you can order it directly from the manufacturer, which is uh, Dynamic Pumps. Um, but that has been our video on reassembly of a gear pump, hydraulic pump. Uh, we took it apart before. Uh, we inspected all the components inside, make sure that the drive shaft was good, make sure that the oil clearance or the fluid clearance between them is uh, within spec using our feeler gauge. We use a straight edge so we can make sure that uh, it wasn't warped. We checked uh, the backing plates to make sure they weren't warped either. We inspected all the seals, the oil seals, and our plastic seals inside uh, for corrosion or distortion or dry rot um, from lack of lubrication. This pump was in good working order before when we took it apart. Uh, it's in good working order now uh, upon our reassembly. If you really wanted to do the 100% test, you could set, hook this up to some hydraulic lines and run some fluid through it to ensure that it's spinning properly. We don't have the facilities for that here at school, um, but we, we did as much as we could. We tested as much as we could, and I feel that this is a, it's a good hydraulic pump. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.